Hello, this is Beverly with scrapandthread.blogspot.com. Today I wanted to show you a Halloween magnet board that I made for counting down or counting up to Halloween, depending on your perspective. Every day you put on a numbered spider uh, that I'll show you in a moment, and um, it has a little magnet attached to it, and it goes on the board uh, as you're uh, doing your countdown. Everything on here right now is taped down with blue painters taped or the haunted house and the little border at the bottom are kind of stuck in behind that groove. There are two stamped images on there, but everything else was cut with the Cricut. I use different cartridges from close to my heart. Art, uh, artiste, artistry, and art booking were the three that I used. All the cut sizes and colors of the cardstock will be listed on my uh, blog, but uh, basically it's whisper, slate, and black. So this magnet board comes from close to my heart, and to give you an idea as to the size of it, I'm going to show you the size of that uh, spider web. This is a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, just to let you know, and then that is the spider web that came from there. It's a good size board and it looks really nice hanging on the wall. I also wanted to show you the size of the spiders that I cut. They're an inch and a half uh, and I fit 42 on one page, and so I had some extras to play with. Once I had figured out that I wanted to stamp on them, I put a little magnet on the back of each one and then stuck them on the back of this little metal pail, which I had purchased at Target in the dollar spot. It's a little hard to make out the details of the spider when they're all bunched together on the pail, so I wanted to show you what those look like. Prior to stamping them, I, I had thought maybe I could use the chalk marker or the silver metallic marker from close to my heart on the black cardstock, and that looks fine. There's nothing wrong with it, but it wasn't quite as vibrant as the white ink that I ended up using on there. But if you have those markers and you don't want to do the embossing part, this is a really great way to do it. And that one was the chalk and the one, the 31 is the silver metallic ink. I have a couple of little tips for embossing or inking and embossing on black cardstock. Sometimes uh, you might have some static electricity that makes the black not quite as black looking and uh, with your inks because you, they, it speckles and when you put the heat gun on it makes it um, so that it's kind of permanently adhered there. You can use an embossing buddy, which it has powder in it, but on black cardstock, sometimes it makes your cardstock kind of uh, faded in color with, by doing that. So some people like to use a dryer sheet. And if you do use a dryer sheet, I would recommend putting it on the whole piece of paper first, rather than just taking one little spider at a time and having to do each one individually, because uh, that way you can get them all cut out um, once you've already done the, the uh, dryer sheet. It's a little pesky if you just take one at a time and then try to rub it off on there. Now if you live in a place where there isn't a lot of static electricity, this, you know, you don't need to do that at all. And some people like the way that the little extra white looks on the black cardstock, so that's also an option available. You know, if you like that, especially if you're making something kind of spooky looking, it's it's totally fine. Uh, so this is the, the uh, stamped image set that I used. You just need kind of a smaller number. These happen to be retired. Uh, but but it's about three quarters of an inch tall. And I used pigment ink, it's called White Daisy from Close to My Heart, and I used Ranger Super Fine Detail in white to emboss it with the heat gun. And then the other items on there that were stamped were used with black archival ink. Uh, that's called Little Monsters. It's this new stamp set that's coming out September 1st. And I did color them with some watercolor pencils to just give them a little bit of shading. Those two weren't colored, but the ones on the board are. And then on the stamps, you can see the black ink on there. It, it They are clean. It's just archival ink does stain your stamp. So that's normal, and it just means they're loved. And then after stamping and coloring them, I did cut them out with my little micro tip scissors uh, and then stuck them on there with the um, tape, uh, the blue tape. And then there's that little dyspeptic acre sign on my haunted house. That was also stamped with uh, black archival ink, and I forgot to mention that before. There were several smaller shapes that I also cut out with the Cricut, like that little cat and those little bats. And those little bats are different than the big bat that was hanging on the wall. And then the rat there, I'm showing the little eye underneath it. It, it cuts out a hole, and I colored with watercolor pencil on a piece of scrap paper and just taped it on the back uh, so that it, it showed up as a red eyeball. 
I thought it gave kind of a nice little bit of a spooky feel, but not too spooky because really it's just kind of a cute project. Um, the spiders aren't real creepy, uh, but um, I think it's kind of a fun project for kids to do uh, as they're learning their numbers or just, you know, in anticipation of a fun holiday. So as they uh, search for the next number that they need to use, um, for smaller kids especially, it helps with counting skills. Then I wanted to show you how I use the blue tape. I just make those little rolls and then stick it on there so it's sort of like a double-sided effect. And then um, it sticks on my board. I'm going to use the board for other projects after Halloween is over with, so I don't want to have it marked up in any way. So the blue painter's tape works really well. And I use the blue painter's tape on the top part of the haunted house, but then I tucked it into the bottom uh, to kind of hold it on there. And then the dyspeptic acre sign is also put on there with some blue tape and um, I think the cat and the other little uh, skeleton guy are just kind of tucked into there. So on my blog I refer to the page numbers of the different books like Artiste uh, and then I'll tell you what the page number is for each of the items and that's what I'm, I'm referring to for each of those uh, different cuts. So the spider and the spider web. Um, this happens to be the art booking book. Uh, and because there's so many cuts for each individual key, it's kind of hard to give it a name uh, without the page number. So that's why I'm, I refer to the page numbers on there. And so then that's a different kind of spider that was in the art booking cut. And then the owl that was on the wall uh, that was hanging over it um, and the little rat, those are also in art booking. It's fun to look through the booklets and find cuts that you like for your particular project. There were different bats. I did end up using two different ones. Uh, there are two different haunted houses, for instance, and I ended up selecting this one. Um, but it's fun to kind of go through and figure out which ones work best for you. And I'll have all of the cuts, as I said, on my blog with the different books that I ended up using. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Please visit my blog at scrapandthread.blogspot.com or send me an email at stampinbev at msn.com. Thanks so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.